New Extractivism An assemblage of concepts and allegories. The word assemblage is usually understood as a collection or gathering of things or people, a machine or object made of pieces fitted together, or a work of art made by grouping together found or unrelated objects. This map and accompanying footnotes are precisely that. One big messy assemblage of different concepts and ideas, assembled into one semi-coherent picture or let us say a map, a world view. 1. Gravity. Like Einstein's theory of relativity, massive objects curve the space and time of the topography of the Internet, proportionally to their weight defined by the number of their users and content. So we can think of massive monopolies and conglomerates such as Google and Facebook as enormous black holes that, with their gravity, create a field so intense that it attracts and swallows the content and users. 2. Forces Many other potential vectors and social forces contribute to that gravitational force. The fear of social isolation, economic and professional insecurity, unrealistic expectations of efficiency and productivity in the adapt-or-die environment, tailored addictions, depression and anxieties. These are just some of the other vectors that constitute social forces that keep us, with or without our wish, attached to those platforms. The social cost of opting out has become so high that opting out is essentially a fantasy. 3. Black Holes Our imaginary hero is swimming against one of those platforms' gravitational force. As they glide towards the singularity defined by the mass of these giants, users and content pass beyond the event horizon, the imaginary boundary in time and space, beyond which there is no return to the outer part of this universe. The event horizon defines the line after which the social and economic price of leaving those platforms is becoming too high. No matter how fast they try to swim now, the stream will pull them towards the center of the black hole. Without even noticing, this story's actor is now falling towards the hole into a new allegory, the cave. 4. Allegory of the Cave what takes place at the bottom of this metaphorical black hole can be described through Plato's allegory of the cave. Plato describes a group of people who spend their entire life chained to cave walls looking at a blank wall. These people are watching the shadows of real objects projected on this wall, giving them names and meanings. In our story, the script and directing of this performance of shadows are entrusted to human algorithmic machines that regulate, filter, censor and moderate the projected content on the walls of the cave. The existing elements and content that exist outside this cave and horizon of events create an information flow, a theater of shadows. 5. Walls The cave and tower walls are constructed of multiple opaque layers and built mostly by ghost work or invisible labor. The bricks of this structure are made of black boxes, closed code and hardware, glued together with the invisible network infrastructure. They are covered with layers of corporate secrets, patents and copyrights. 6. The Interface Interfaces are framing and structuring the projected algorithmic spectacle of images. Even though they are a direct manifestation of rules, regulations and taxonomies, they successfully obscure what is hidden beneath them. They define directly or indirectly what we can or cannot do. They are both tools and discursive frames. They are instituted as an order of discourse and embodiment of the discipline power of the platform. This cave is not only a prison cell, but it carries out the function of a factory hall and a resource extraction apparatus. The prisoner performs their threefold function as a worker, a resource and a product. 7. Shadows and Capture Agents The spectacle of a constant flow of information projected through the interface creates a digital shadow on the opposite wall of the cave. The projected digital shadow on the wall is a resource field where thousands of capture agents, tentacles of the rhizomatic surveillance complex, extract information. Every movement or emotional reaction is being recorded continuously. These capture agents can take many forms and sizes. From the tiny pieces of code, crawlers that wander the web, 
over the sensors catching heartbeats and surveillance cameras capturing our faces, to the complex network of satellites orbiting Earth. They can see our shadows through a full range of the electromagnetic spectrum. They can be invisible or massive like a 500 meters wide radio telescope. The process of quantification is reaching into the human affective, cognitive and physical worlds. Every segment of our existence reflected on our digital shadows, can be seen as a form of direct or indirect labor producing data as a behavioral surplus. When we breathe, walk, or sleep, every single emotion that we feel, our attention, our body temperature, or diseases that we have, everything can produce a behavioral surplus if being captured by surveillance apparatus. In that sense, even our bare existence within the walls of the cave can be seen as labor. Prisoner workers need to spend more and more hours maintaining their profiles in a similar fashion to sex workers in the windows of red light districts. Digital identity labor is the forced labor of the 21st century. This creates an auto-disciplinary society where each anomaly and misbehavior is detected and quantified. 8. Platoptican. The gravity of these techno giants hold billions of users, workers, products at the bottom of those caves. In this assemblage of allegories, millions of caves or prison cells form the unique and invisible panopticon structure. The central tower of this structure has two main functions, one, to project the content on the walls of the caves and, two, to surveil and capture the digital shadows of the prisoners reflected on the opposite wall. 9. Information Retrieval From each cell cave and through the core of the Panopticon Tower, streams of information are flowing into one of the central structures of this image, the data bank. The data bank is not just the engine room, but the power itself. From here, we are examining three processes crucial for this story. On one side, extracted, stored and analyzed personal data, is shaping the multidimensional portrait of the individual. On the second, all the products of the user's labor are being stored, analyzed and ranked, to form the information spectacle of images, meanings, and reputations. Furthermore, in the third one, this structure lies upon the top of the exploitation of human minds, bodies and nature. 10. Creation of data body. Our online behavior is captured, processed, and deconstructed into statistical vectors, clusters, patterns and anomalies. Each move we make is carefully analyzed by thousands of mathematical functions, algorithms and machine learning systems. This system, does not see us through linear narratives emerging from our browsing behavior, metadata, or movements in physical space but as n-dimensional statistical projections. Each and every one of our clicks sharpens the resolution and complexity of this abstract and constantly changing statistical portrait or data body. 11. Dividuals. These multidimensional data portraits of the individual, consisting of millions of data points in hundreds of dimensions, can be seen as what Deleuze will name individual. A physically embodied human subject that is endlessly divisible and reducible to data representations via the modern technologies of control. The critical art ensemble is describing this data body as the fascist sibling of the virtual body, a much more highly developed virtual form, and one that exists in complete service to the corporate and police state. 12. Condividuals? Individual is always open to interaction, always ready to be detached from, and attached to, other individuals that share some properties with it, creating collective agents as condividuals, or supersubjects. The mountains and valleys of multidimensional ever-changing invisible algorithmic landscapes are clustering individual individuals and creating new relations, taxonomies, and ontologies. 13. Surveillant Assemblage the full picture of our individual being is not centralized in one place but is spread across hundreds of data centers in the rhizomatic assemblage of the surveillance economy and government actors. This non-heterogeneous and dispersed assemblage portrait exists through the system of data dealers, the official and unofficial exchange of data, in constant flow forming one functional entity.
14. Content Extraction Each web page or other piece of content that is being captured in the wild is rendered and analyzed. This content is being extracted into hundreds of different signals. Collected content and extracted data become a permanent corporate resource for creating multidimensional, dynamic, complex topologies in which every piece of data becomes an object that is contextually linked to other objects. Within this map, this new meta-territory, crawl hundreds of different mathematical functions, algorithms, and neural networks that we can call instruments of measurement and perception. 15. Instruments of Measurement and Perception Those instruments of measurement and perception always come with inbuilt aberrations. The shape of the algorithmic lenses is carefully crafted to project the image that is in accordance with the platform's financial interest and political goals and values. Platforms often imply direct rules and regulations. They have direct power of regulation of what can be seen or said, what kind of content can and cannot exist in their universe. Here we are visually representing those rules and regulations as filters. Similarly to the algorithmic lenses, the fabric of those filters is crafted according to the platform's financial interests and political goals and values. 16. Projection of the World Instruments of measurement and perception are ranking and defining hierarchies and relations between content, users and meaning. They define the digital regime of truth and order. This regime is a prism through which the world is projected in the form of the constant stream of spectacles on the walls of the caves. 17. Engines of Extraction Empowered by the digital extractivism tools of the information age, everything becomes a potential frontier for expansion and extraction. From the depth of DNA code in every single cell of the human organism, to vast frontiers of human emotions, behavior and social relations, to nature as a whole, everything becomes the territory for the new extractivism. At this moment in the 21st century, we see a new form of extractivism that is well underway, one that reaches into the furthest corners of the biosphere and the deepest layers of human cognitive and affective being. 18. Enclosure and Affinity to Infinity In the transition to the information age, capitalism was given a chance to satisfy its affinity for infinity, to form and conquer an infinite number of new territories, to create new mechanisms for the accumulation of capital within these new spaces and to formulate new forms of exploitation. Once the territory is invaded, the process of enclosure and exploitation is established. New forms of extractivism are expanding into the territories far behind the biodiversity and knowledge enclosure. This is why we are not speaking anymore just about the knowledge economy but about the attention economy, emotion economy, and many other new economies being born from the invasion of new territories of extraction. 19. Fractal Supply Chains Supply chains hidden behind the engines of extractivism are black boxes as much as neural networks or algorithms hidden behind interfaces. Each triangle of this fractal represents one phase in the production process, from birth in a geological process, through life as a consumer product, and ultimately to death in an electronics dump. Within the fractal supply chain, we see a perpetual dance between human labor, non-human labor, earth labor and atomitization. 20. Blood, sweat, and toxic lakes. Every click or swipe we make online creates one little hole in the ground, filled with toxic waste and covered by toxic clouds. Every movement of materials and data within the planetary scale factory has its own hidden price. Supply chains are optimized towards maximizing profit for a few, while the real costs of the destruction that follows are shared among all the living entities on the planet in the present and the future. One molecule after another is extracted by labor and technique to make things for humans, but the waste products don't return so that the cycle can renew itself. 21. Triangular Trade Slavery was at the heart of the development of the modern planetary scale global economy. From those days, the same model of constant flow within the vast fractal production chains expanded in time, space and complexity. 
The transatlantic slave trade evolved into the contemporary planetary scale factory. 22. Chains of Digital Colonialism Traditional colonial practices of control over critical assets, trade routes, natural resources and exploitation of human labor are still deeply embedded in the contemporary supply chains, logistics and assembly lines of digital content, products and infrastructure. In that sense, chains of digital colonialism are made both on the extraction of digital surplus and the traditional exploitation of labor and resources. The concepts presented are mostly represented here visually, in the form of allegories. Dictionaries define allegory as a story, poem, or picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically a moral or political one. All of these allegories and concepts together, joined in the form of an assemblage, create together a blueprint of a machine-like superstructure, or a super-allegory. In that sense, what we have here is an almost fractal allegorical structure, an allegory, within an allegory, within an allegory.